<laughs> this is new video purportedly showing Taliban fighters capturing Kandahar. The city Canadian forces fought to defend for five years. The Taliban now control more than two-thirds of Afghanistan. CBC News has learned Canadian special forces will be sent into the country to get Canadian staff out of the embassy in Kabul. These are images from 2003, when then Foreign Affairs Minister Bill Graham opened that embassy. In an email to CBC News, a Canadian embassy spokesperson would not say whether the building would be shut down, but did say the situation is being closely monitored. For more on this, our chase team has reached retired Major General David Fraser in Kingston, Ontario. He commanded more than 2,000 NATO coalition troops as they faced off against the Taliban in the southern Afghan province of Kandahar. And Major General, I want to ask you, you fought for five years. You lost people there in Kandahar. You wanted to keep it safe from the Taliban. Now they're in there. What are you feeling? It's it's Susanna. It's good to be with you, but it's it's a gut wrenching situation. It's hard to watch, given the fact forty thousand Canadians fought for many years to buy time for the Afghans to find a solution, and here we are watching this thing unravel at a breakneck speed. It's just really tough to see. And when you talk about breakneck speed, does that surprise you, or are you perhaps not surprised that when the U.S. decided, you know, we're out and we're going to be by the end of this month, that the patience of the Taliban wins out in the end. Well, they've always said that, you know, we may wear the watches and the uh, Taliban, you know, have the time. And mm -hmm. certainly history seems to be proving itself out on that one again. Uh, I think what is surprising is that after a trillion dollars, 300,000 Afghan security forces being trained and equipped that should be more than capable of managing 60,000 Taliban who've got AK-47s, four magazines, and maybe an RPG, mm -hmm. the, the Afghan leadership had no sense of will or determination to take care of their own country. That is surprising. Uh, and here we are where we're now watching a humanitarian crisis, a catastrophe unfold in front of us. And what seems to be the only city left uh, in Afghan hands is Kabul. And we'll get to Kabul in just a minute because I want to talk to you about the special forces going there to evacuate our Canadian embassy staff. But, you know, whose fault is it that the Taliban are taking over these cities? Is it the fault of the Afghans? Did we not train them well enough? Did we not give them the right equipment? What is the essence here? I think Canadians can take solace in the fact that our men and women, for the, the years we were there, the 40,000, did our jobs, did what we could to help Afghans and provide them hope and opportunity. We gave them an awful lot. We were not there to win the war. We were there to buy time and to assist. Number two is I think the Afghans have got to look at themselves, the Afghan leadership, to say with all that effort by the international community, why haven't you done a better job leading and, and governing your country than what we're seeing right now? Uh, I, I'm really quite critical of the Afghan government. And for the Americans, how they, uh, not the what that they left, but how they left, uh, the plan seems to be pretty weak, that they should have had more assurance from the Afghans that they were ready and prepared to do what they needed to do after the international community left. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at your military history, it's long, it is storied. I'm sure you've got, you know, multiple stories that you could share with us if we had a, a whole bunch of time. But what do you say to the other Canadian Forces members, those who served our country over there in Afghanistan, some who saw their brothers and sisters die? What do you say to them when they question now what their service really meant? Well, I tell them, be proud of what you did, because I'm proud of them and, and for their effort that they put in providing that hope and opportunity you and I and every Canadian takes for granted. And we are now trying to help out locally employed civilians and interpreters come back to this country who helped us, who are now in peril and, be hunt and being targeted by the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Let's help them come, come to this country to, to share the same pleasures and uh, you know, liberties that we have here, which that country doesn't seem to want to hold. 
General, let's get to those special forces. We know they're going to have, you know, certain duties when they get to our Canadian embassy there in Afghanistan. We're not getting confirmation that the embassy will be shut down, but the situation is being monitored. We know there will be people, staff there who will be evacuated. Walk me through what the role of special forces will be on the ground. Are there specific rules of engagement as well? So, first of all, the Canadian Forces has contingency plans that they practice all the time for all our facilities uh, around the world. And this would have included what scenarios like what they're in there for doing right now. So, they are prepared. The second thing is they are in there with all the resources that they need to safeguard our embassy against attack safeguard Canadians that they have to get out, which means getting them from the embassy to wherever they're going to go to extract out of the country. They have the communications, they'll have the transportation, they'll have whatever they need to make sure that Canadians are safe and are out of harm's way and extracted as required, including taking whatever in the building needs to be taken out that's sensitive. So we, that is, they got the best organization, the special forces, this is their raison d'etre, they are doing, they will make sure this happens, and it's complementary to what the United Kingdom and the United States are doing. On the ground there, you mentioned the speed at which Taliban are taking over various cities. We know Kabul right now, not one of them. That could change. Would the rules of engagement, hence, therefore change for our special forces? No, no, the rules of engagement are, you know, first of all, uh, the special forces are really good because Kabul is a city of over a million people. A lot of internal displaced people are there now. Their rules of engagement will be very restrictive in the sense of protecting Canadians from self-defense, but also making sure that nothing gets there. Uh, so I have no concerns, and Canadians should have no concerns about the rules of engagement. They will do what they need to do to protect Canadians and uh, mitigate any risk to non-combatants and civilians. You know, your first answer really struck me when I asked you how you were feeling as you watched these cities fall to the Taliban again, especially those that you helped to preserve. Um, and you said gut-wrenching. So basically, was it worth it, General? You know, I think, you know, we went in there originally to, to fight terrorism that attacked the trade towers, and that was Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Yeah, that was a reason why we should have gone there, so we tried to mitigate that. Uh, the mission changed. Pol politicians changed the mission to make a nation building. We were providing hope and opportunity and allowing Afghans to try to build a democracy of, of their own bit making. And, you know, they asked us to come in, and we were doing what we could to, to help them. Uh, again, I go back to the Afghan leadership. We did what we were asked to do. I just wish they would do what they are expected to do, and that is lead their people, engage in meaningful conversation with the Taliban to legitimize themselves and to have an opposition party so that they, you know all Afghans can, can debate and argue the future of Afghanistan as opposed to having a civil war like what we're seeing right now. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your service, and you stay well. Thank you very much. Retired Major General David Fraser in Kingston, Ontario. He served as commander of NATO's southern Afghanistan.